Marine attack aircraft have a new capability for delivering their bombs in adverse weather and accurately hitting a target. The system employed is a lightweight radar control unit called the TPQ-10. During the period of December 1959 through April 1960, the Marine Air Detachment at the Naval Missile Center, Point Magoo, California, deployed its radar section to the Naval Ordnance Test Station, China Lake, California. Purpose? To conduct extensive engineering and serviceability tests of the TPQ-10 system. The tests were conducted in clear daylight and on the test station's air-to-ground instrumented ranges. But these parameters do not dilute the validity of the test data, nor do they affect the test capabilities shown, for the TPQ-10 system is effective under all weather conditions. Pilot visibility is not a factor in its accuracy. The TPQ-10 is an all-weather ground support direction system designed to control an aircraft by means of an X-band radar and electronic commands which are sent from the control center to the aircraft. The TPQ-10, which will replace the MPQ-14, represents a major step forward for several reasons. It is helicopter transportable, has greater range, accuracy, and tactical flexibility. In transport condition, the entire ground installation is contained in two pallets, each weighing approximately 3,700 pounds. The control shelter, which houses the radar console, computer, plotting board, and cables, comprises one pallet, while the other pallet contains the radar, the radar antenna, and the power generator for the system. The ground installation can be assembled by an eight-man team in approximately 40 minutes. It can be completely operational in an additional 40 minutes. When operational, this system can engage targets from 1,000 to 100,000 yards range or control an aircraft at a range of 200,000 yards. To facilitate tracking, aircraft employing this system utilize an X-band radar beacon. Installation of the beacon is easily accomplished. In a recent test, such a beacon was installed and operating in an HUS two hours after work began. Attack aircraft such as the A-4D are equipped with a command link receiver and an autopilot which permit closed loop operation. The A4D2 will be retrofitted with a simple two-axis autopilot which controls only roll and yaw. In the A4D2N, the system ties into the aircraft's three-axis autopilot. The prime employment of the TPQ-10 is the control of aircraft for bombing missions. Two vital prerequisites for accomplishing this function are accurate battlefield mapping and target location. A new technique being tested for obtaining these prerequisites combines the TPQ-10 system with marine photo aircraft. Using an F-8U with a radar beacon for more optimum tracking, the control center vectors the aircraft over the desired battle sector at high altitude and airspeed. After making a series of runs to produce the photographs for an uncontrolled mosaic, the photoplane descends to a minimum practical altitude and flies several vectors over the battle area. During these runs, the TPQ-10 triggers a vertical camera and records simultaneously ground range and azimuth of the aircraft. With current non-stabilized F-8U camera installations, aircraft roll and pitch introduce errors in the location of ground zero on the vertical pictures. However, tests are now being conducted to determine the magnitude of these errors so that a requirement for stabilized camera mounts can be documented. When the photographic mission is completed, the aircraft returns to the base where the films are developed. And these vertical photographs are compared with the uncontrolled mosaic to provide a series of fixed points which are located on the uncontrolled mosaic. These points, when used for reference, lend a high degree of control to the mosaic. 
Several advantages of this technique must readily be acknowledged. It pinpoints the exact location of the TPQ-10 and its targets. It can check the position of friendly forces and it can determine the accuracy of existing maps. With the control center accurately located, we are ready to demonstrate the most important application of this equipment the precise control of attack aircraft for a close air support bombing mission. Immediately after takeoff, the attack aircraft climbs to altitude and proceeds to the orbit area. Here the aircraft orbits, conserving fuel until such time that its support is required. When a mission develops, the aircraft is vectored to the initial point at an assigned altitude and on the strike heading. The pilot then engages his autopilot, thereby activating the control system which locks airborne and ground installations together. With the system activated, the aircraft heading is automatically controlled while the pilot maintains altitude and airspeed. The radar supplies continuous information about the strike aircraft's position to the computer which calculates the proper heading and relays any required correction to the command receiver in the aircraft. This causes the autopilot to be actuated and corrects the aircraft heading. The TPQ-10 radar has the added advantages of solving two extremely difficult problems in bombing operations, wind and altitude. The wind problem is solved by a brief tracking check as the aircraft approaches the target. Altitude readout on the radar enables the control center to monitor and accurately fix aircraft altitude. At the proper time, the pilot receives a visual signal to arm his ordinance. And he activates his master arm switch, which readies his bombs for release. Upon reaching the desired position, a signal is sent to the command receiver in the aircraft whereupon the bombs are automatically released and the commands cease. During the test program, an aircraft flying such missions at 20,000 feet and an indicated 250 knots averaged 50 yards error for a total of 65 bombs dropped. In the present-day concept of all-weather operations, the TPQ-10 serves as a backup for GCA, or regular traffic control equipment. For example, should there be a malfunction or complete failure of this equipment, the control center merely shifts its target to the end of the runway and tracks the aircraft home, giving the pilot accurate heading and supplying minimum safe altitudes for the pilot to maintain over the terrain until he breaks clear of the clouds and makes a landing. The vital role of our airborne reconnaissance troops require that they be flown accurately to the proper drop zone. And the TPQ-10 can fulfill this requirement without visual reference to the ground area. When radio silence is not of primary consideration, a transport aircraft equipped with a radar beacon is tracked by the radar and controlled by voice commands until it is properly positioned over the designated drop zone and the signal to jump is given. Should the tactical situation demand radio silence, the mission can be accomplished by having an aircraft equipped for closed loop operation lead the transport to the designated drop zone, where, upon signal from the control center, the jumpers leave the aircraft to land in the proper area. The TPQ-10 has a broad capability in support of helicopter operations. The recovery of the recon paratroopers is a typical example. 
A beacon-equipped HUS is accurately vectored to the rendezvous point for a quick and safe pickup of the reconnaissance party. Minimum altitude operations are, of course, subject to the line of sights limitations of the radar. With the TPQ-10 mounted on a 200-foot knoll, this pickup was conducted at 12 miles, and the HUS was accurately vectored at ranges of 14.2 miles while flying at 500 feet. Battle concepts emphasizing small, fast-moving, and widely dispersed units embody the need for accurate all-weather delivery of aerial cargo. Today, the TPQ-10 ground support radar provides marine transport aircraft with the means to deliver cargo accurately regardless of weather conditions. Here again, when radio silence is not mandatory, the transport is controlled by voice vectoring from the control center in the same manner as in delivering reconnaissance troops. When in proper position, the cargo is dumped and subsequently lands in the designated area. But if closed loop operation is demanded and no voice commands can be given, the system employs a tactical lead plane that is equipped for closed loop operation. In this way, the tactical aircraft can lead the transport to the proper position so it can dump its cargo in the designated zone. Tests were also conducted which demonstrate the TPQ-10's capability to control small, high-speed aircraft in low-altitude delivery of supplies during all-weather conditions. Using the new M3A1 and M4 high-speed containers, the A4D dropped supplies at a range of 20,000 yards from the TPQ-10 at speeds up to 450 knots. When displacement becomes necessary, the entire installation is quickly dismantled and palletized for pickup by a helicopter, which has been directed to the pickup area by the TPQ-10. The following conclusions are stated in a brief but significant summary. With the TPQ-10, marine aviation can provide more accurate close air support in all weather conditions. It can rapidly provide accurate battlefield mapping for both its own operations and for the tactical commander. It can deliver troops and supplies accurately to designated drop zones. It can control helicopters on tactical missions. It can provide backup to existing traffic control facilities, and it enhances its broad operational capabilities with its flexibility of deployment by helicopter.